Highway 395 is an old friend. We've been coming up through here as long as I can remember. This road was the start of oh so many ski and camping trips. And this would be the start of yet another. Here's next morning at the lodge, and don't it seem like one moment it's a warm and sunny spring in the desert, and the next moment it's dead of winter, all white out and cold and blizzardy. Yep, we woke up to this. Here's Cowboy Joe Bob, fresh up from L.A. and learning about driving in the mountain snow. Sure hope he got where he's going okay. The bunkhouse was right nice and fixed up all fancy with giant TVs in every room. Here's the weather lady pointing out how it's nice and hot everywhere in the country, except here. The kitchen was so pretty we were all afraid to go in and mess it up, so it went unused. A little later we rousted ourselves out and flagged down the ski bus that takes us to the mountain. Here's Dave and here's Eric, looking like the serious skiers they are, ready for the nastiest weather this side of the Rockies. Well, la di da, it's a gondola. It goes the same place as the bus, but the view's a bit better. After lots of preparing and traveling and bothering, we finally made it to the slopes to get in a bit of skiing. The skier in the orange parka would be Dave, looking like his knees are hog-tied together. Now that's the way skiing's supposed to look. Nice technique, Dave. Son of a bitch, that man can ski. Get along, little doggies, get along. This is a techno-color cattle drive, just the way I remembered. Never mind newfangled high-speed quad chairs and stuff. We still had a good old wait to get on the lift just the way it was way back when. Done skiing before you know it. Now for a little apre skiing. Next day, and wouldn't you know it, the weather's perfect and we're going to get in the car and go home. We'll have to come back summer and use the pool. Eric's at the wheel and Dave's riding shotgun as we ride down the streets of Mammoth Lakes, headed for Schatz's Bakery to pick up the traditional loaf of shepherd's bread. Mmm, -hmm. look at all those goodies. We're back on Highway 395 again, not much far along yet. A look out the back window shows where we were these past two days, Mammoth Mountain, all covered with new snow. Look any direction from here and it's nothing but big mountains. There's Mount Morrison, familiar sight like an old friend. We're driving through a volcanic caldera, a valley high and wide and ringed with mountains. We're southbound on Highway 395, following the line of rugged peaks known as the Sierra Crest. Look ahead and Mount Tom comes into view, very tall at 13,600 feet, but it's not the highest mountain we'll see today. It's hard to imagine that you can look at these mountains and call them young, but as mountains go, they are. The Sierras took maybe 25 million years to become what they are, and they're still changing and growing. A few more miles and we've descended a few thousand feet from alpine country to the lush green pastures of Round Valley just outside the town of Bishop. The east side of the Owens Valley is bound by the White and Inyo Mountains, almost as high and rugged as the Sierras to the west, but they're not as showy or near. The Owens Valley is dry country, part of the larger desert community known as Basin and Range that extends from here to Utah. We're on the road 45 minutes since Mammoth, with five hours more to go, and now we're on the outskirts of the biggest town in these parts, Bishop, California. I asked Eric, 
Hey Eric, do you feel like stopping for coffee? And Eric says, no, not specially. And I asked David, want to stop for a donut or something? He said, no, I'm good. But it's a small town, and before we know it, we're already past it. The Owens is a long valley, with large parts mostly empty like this. Then every half hour there's a small town. Maybe we can get out and stretch our legs in the next one that comes along. I called out, David, David, there's some sheep. And David says, where, where? I don't see any sheep. Don't get me all worked up. Now there's some cows and I'm thinking, lunch, hamburgers. Anybody have any thoughts about lunch? And Eric says, well, I'm really not very hungry right now. David says, I still feel like I'm full for breakfast. And I said, I didn't see either of you eat any breakfast. So Eric says, maybe we'll stop in Lone Pine for lunch. Boy, doesn't this road seem to stretch a ways? Independence, California, where the posted speed limit is 25 and we're going 22. So I say, Eric, drive faster. It won't kill you to drive faster. Is it Lone Pine yet? And Eric says, no, this is just Independence. Hey, look at that old building. I bet that's where they take speeders and throw them in jail. Hmm. House, white picket fence, another house, a street with big mountains in back, a former gas station that now sells antiques, a few more houses, and independence is gone, and the speed limit's 65 again. As David takes pictures looking west, I'm taking some video looking east so you can see what this bit of the Inyo Mountains look like. There's Mount Whitney, 14,500 feet and change, highest mountain in the lower 48. And there would be Lone Pine and lunch break. Lone Pine's a busy little town and is the de facto Hollywood of the Eastern Sierra. Half of the westerns ever made, and a few easterns too, were shot around the corner so these big mountains could serve as a genuine Old West backdrop. I've been dreaming of lunch ever since spotting those cows, and now spread before us are menus filled with all the styles of burger a man could ever want. Now where'd that waitress wander off to? We had a good lunch, and now we're back in the car again, and I'm back in the back seat again, pointing my iPhone at the highest mountains in this part of the world again. Mount Whitney is off to the right side there, but it's further back than the others, so it actually looks a bit lower than the ones in front, but it's not. Then I said to the boys, Hey, why don't we stop at Fossil Falls? And Dave said, Did you just call me a fossil? And I said, no, you doofus, it's a lava rock formation that looks like dinosaur bones. It's just a little ways down and off to the left. And come to think of it, you do remind me of a fossil a bit. So here's this place that's all black basalt crags everywhere, and a long time ago, the Owens River ran over the cliff here, and the flowing water made all kinds of strange shapes out of the rock. You can see with volcanoes and whatnot nearby, the land keeps moving around, so the river jumps around too, flowing in three different places back when, and now it doesn't flow at all. It's hard to imagine that any water more than a trickle ever came this way, but here's the evidence. It takes a lot of force to chisel down hard rock like this. Back on the road, and we're traveling through yet more spectacular and colorful country. We've left the black rock of Fossil Falls for Red Rock Canyon, returning to where this film started. Red Rock Canyon is an ancient lake bed that got tilted up and eroded away so as to make these fascinating shapes and colors. Another 20 miles down the road, and we come to the town of Mojave. It's a good place to take a break, gas up, or chow down as needed, and it's a big part of ski trip tradition. Mojave is much more than just a pit stop for the weary. It's home to some of the most advanced aircraft in the world, and it's a big railroad center too.
I've got a thing for trains, so I had to go get a closer look. These are 60,000 gallon tank cars, and each one has enough gas and ethanol and God knows what to go off like a small nuke. I don't let that bother me none, it's all perfectly safe. It's the final leg of the trip home to LA, and we're passing through the desert communities of Lancaster and Palmdale. New buildings seem to pop up here like grass after rain, and that's how LA keeps growing. This trip we've seen black rock, red rock, and now some man-made rock they're making to push back the hills to make the freeway wider. This is the infamous 405 freeway construction, and here's the bridge project that coined the term Carmageddon. This has been the story of three men's desperate attempts to get away from the noise and grit of urban life, only to find it exactly as they left it a few days later. But a good time was actually had by all, and I hope that includes you too. Thanks for watching, and so long.